Welcome back, fellow gamers. I want to talk to you today about maximizing your trade binder. So we all know that trading is one of the great aspects of Magic and other trading card games. I mean, it's right built into the name, right? They're collectibles, they're tradables, whatever. It's an aspect that I adore, and I try to take advantage of it as much as possible. So I started employing these tactics in order to make sure I can maximize a trade with a person. Now I'm not talking about getting a disproportionate amount of value from somebody. I'm talking about making sure I can trade with as many people as possible. And that really ensures that I can either nab the cards I want or get cards I need to complete other trades. So it really facilitates that aspect of it. And I'll give you a few outlines on how I do this and how I've achieved it in the past. First off is your binder aesthetic. So I'm going to show you something right now. My trade binder currently doesn't have a cover. This happened during the Ether Revolt pre-release where uh, two, two, I don't know if they were 12 years old or younger, but regardless, two younger people were arguing over my binder. One wanted to see it, the other one wasn't done with it. They started pulling and my cover came right off. So I lost, I lost the cover and that brings up a great point. So if I plop this in front of you, what does that tell you? That tells you I don't really take care of my stuff, even though I do. Uh, and almost to a fault, it, the appearance of it looks terrible because, hey, if I, if I don't take care of my stuff, most of these cards are probably just going to be crap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass, and I'm not even going to look at the binder. So that right there, I, I lose out on a trade. So make sure that the aesthetics, and this goes all the way down to pages. So if your page, and they're clear binder pages here, they're the standard 18 pockets, or 9 pockets that fit 18 cards, whatever, they only fit... If they get scratched up, what happens is that you can't really see the cards that well, or cards that would be near mint might be confused for lightly played, medium played, and so on. So I want to make sure that I really showcase my near mint cards. Uh, on near mint cards, I do keep, I only keep near mint cards in this binder. I have a separate binder that includes lightly played, heavy played, slightly played, all that, all those SPLP whatever. And that's because if somebody really is looking for a, a specific card and they're want it near mint i'm going to go and show them this i don't want them to think i don't take care of my stuff if the person wants a discount and they're looking for a near uh, they're looking for less than near mint i'll show them a separate binder in which i carry uh you know less than ideal cards and generally speaking i'll find a few people that really just look for that and they'll ask me do you have that or if they don't see anything in this binder i'll ask them again if they would like to see my lightly played collection this is a regular three ring binder. I The replacement, which I'll be doing after this video, where I'm gonna be taking out all the cards and putting them back in. Uh, it's just like a, a binder that I got for school, pretty much, and it's it, it's serviceable. I don't like the binders that, uh, like made by Ultra Pro, that have the sleeves built into the binders, because what happens is like, if a sheet gets torn or something happens to one sheet, like the essential whole binder, is it loses its its appeal to me and knowing that i will i switch out my cards a lot so having to reorganize everything can be a pain Ugh, so that's one thing i just want to avoid completely and then from there so i keep the standard cards at the front of my binder and i break it down by color i found that most of the time people look for standard so i will definitely slot standard in first so they can quickly look at the cards that they want or are interested in without having to mess around with a bunch of cards that they don't. After that though, I will filter out through the latest master set and then I just go into a bunch of older stuff. I separate everything by color and that's really done a lot easier so that when somebody is looking for a specific card, they can locate it more easily. But also when somebody's flipping cards around and they're just, they're just perusing, I find it's kind of a uh, sensation overload when you have a bunch of different types of cards with different colors and I've found that people oftentimes will skip or they said that they didn't see a particular card that they didn't notice it but they were looking for it and I, I attributed that to ever since I moved to a color scheme uh, people have more often than not found what they were looking for without me having to point out when I asked them are you looking for something particular and I also make sure to keep my rares and mythic rares in the front of my binder that's usually what people are going for. And then I keep my uncommons and commons. I don't include anything from standard in my commons and uncommons because honestly, the price point is not really worth it for me to carry. I would rather carry the expensive commons and uncommons from older sets so that if there's somebody that's playing popper or they're looking for legacy, modern, any other types of commander, uh, they're more easily accessible. I'm not wasting room 
on the actual cards because I don't like to bring a huge amount of binders. I bring three binders, uh, the one that you saw, the lightly played one, and then one other one I haven't told you about, which I will get to in a second. So I also don't keep money cards in here. So if you'll quickly look, I've got a lot of jank, a lot of jank in here. And that's by design. So when I show somebody my first binder, uh, I don't know how honest they are, and I don't want them swiping stuff or if they're just all of a sudden take off of the binder. I, I don't want any of that. I have a money binder, and it's right here. And and yes, if you notice, it's the exact type of binder I said I don't like. Well, in this binder, what I do is I carry all the expensive stuff. So once I've let somebody look through that binder and I'm, I'm okay with them looking through this, I'll hand it to them, I'll take it out of my bag, I'll put the other binder back in it. I don't let multiple binders circulate. That's how you get stuff stolen, and that is what I don't want. <laughs> Especially if I have an expensive binder like this. Uh, also, I'll only bring it out if I go through somebody's binder and I actually see that there's things I really want. So what's in here are things that I need to really be enticed to trade on. And that that's because there's nothing more frustrating for me when I'm going through somebody's binder and I see cards that I like and they're not there for trade. It's their trade binder, but they're not there for trade. And that's, for me, it's so frustrating. It's like, why put it in your trade binder other than to show off? And you know, it's cool that you have those cards, but really it's not helping me complete the trade. Like, it's really cool. I want the card. I'm asking about the card. But why Why we want to tease somebody? And I don't want to do that to them. So if somebody goes and like, they're like, oh, well, hey, I would like this, uh, I don't know, um, you know, this this Lynn Valla foil. Uh, you know, what do you want for it? I see that they only have like $5 worth of cards that I want. I don't want to be like, ah, oh, sorry, uh, you know, not worth it. Like I, I don't want I don't want somebody wanting a card and not being able to get them. I want to put any card that I show them into their collection. And I found ever since I started employing these tricks, I've really managed to up the amount of trades completed I do. On average, I'll complete somewhere around 70% of the trades that I actually initiate, whereas before it was more like 10%. And that could be a lot of it due to just having people miss the cards or they interpret that I don't have certain cards or the cards I do have aren't great quality or they just they can't be bothered to go through five or six binders really I keep it down to a certain amount of cards and then I bring those cards I bring the cards I think are more likely to be traded and I definitely leave home the stuff that's not really that valuable so if we're talking like a 40 cent rare eh, I'll put a few of them in so I can try to even out trades but I'm definitely not stacking my binder with them so those are my tips. Uh, if you have any tips for trading, let me know in the comments. I would love to share them with the rest of the community. And if you'd like to check out any of my other videos, you could do that right over here. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that right here. It lets you know when we go live for our live streams and when we upload new videos just like this one. I'd like to thank you for making me a part of your day. Until next time, good gaming.